Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our October Breakfast Club. Hard to believe we are almost through 2022. Good morning, Gracie. Hi, Irene. Um, good morning, Carol. Nice to have you with us. Good morning, Christy. Hi, Polly in Louisiana. Hi, Deborah. Good morning, uh, Joy and Jackie. Good morning, Helen. Hello, Debbie up in Madeira. Hi, Cindy and the Six Pack. I don't know if you guys are together or you're Zooming afterwards, but good morning. Hello, Sharon. Hello, Gloria. Good morning, Maria. Um, so we have a fun breakfast club, quick breakfast club today. Um, we are going to do um, an additional little demo when we go over our um, project today to help you all. And we've got some other things that are coming. Good morning, Rose. Hi, Mary. Um, hello, Pat. Um, let's see, the six-pack in um, Ridgecrest. So good morning, Diana and Karen and Norma. So the three of you are together this morning. Hello, Joy. Hello, Tracy up in Oregon. I was thinking about you yesterday. Um, and then, of course, good morning to um, the behind-the-scenes crew, Amy and Marissa. Um, they are here getting, um, keeping me probably in line this morning. So those of you that are new, welcome. Um, we're glad you're here. So we will do a show and tell. We'll go over some new products. Of course, we have a great project for you. Um, and there's some additional things you'll be able to do with it. So we'll talk to you guys about that later. Um, as soon as we finish Breakfast Club here, I'm heading to the other part of our filming. And then I'll be teaching um, a two-day virtual class. So I'm excited about getting going on that. Um, good morning, Kathy in Florida. Um, hello, Linda. So we will just dive right on in to um, good morning, Amira, and of course, Gloria. But we're glad you're here watching with us uh, from New York. Hope you guys are having a great day. So we're going to dive right into our October Breakfast Club show and tell. But uh, did I add the computer, Marissa? No. I didn't add the computer. <laughs> Hold on, guys, real quick. I didn't add the show and tell. I got it ready to do. And it is not there. Give me one quick second. So just hang on. I sure thought I added our show and tell. Let me reconnect it. You know how the internet goes. Okay, the only thing there is. is it there? Yeah. It's okay. Now it should be. All right. Sorry about that, guys. So we're on there, Marissa? Yeah. We're good to go. All right. So Breakfast Club show and tell. For October, we're going to start with Sue Gaffney. So Sue finished our, was that our August? That is our August uh, Breakfast Club, so our Apple wall hanging. I've really loved how these have turned out. Sue also took our class we recently had with um, Vanessa from Fabric Confetti. So she did both of the wall hangings, the Happy Fall Y'all and the Trick or Treat. Great job on those. She got this quilt finished. Looks like it's back from the long armor. Just ready to throw that binding on it. Margie, uh, she did, uh, took an art quilt class and this is an art quilt of Yosemite Falls is I believe um, what the email said. So the nice job there. Susan up in Oregon. So she finished last month's breakfast club which was the pumpkin table runner. And then in the background, she's got some quilted uh, maple leaf projects. So those are um, all done on her embroidery machine in the hoop. So nice job on finishing those up, Susan. Diana over in Ridgecrest, part of, uh, we're going to call them Six Pack East. Uh, she did all of these Halloween coasters, which are really fun. And she has been making bowl cozies. And I was looking at these, and it's really fun to see all the different sizes that she's been making. Um, so everything from a small bowl up to looks like it'd be a good sized dinner plate. So been making those, I'm sure, for gifts. There's more of them. Uh, lots of sports themes there. She also did the Happy Fall uh, class with Fabric, uh, Fabric Confetti. So once again, that was a virtual class that we offered uh, directly with the designer. She finished up this quilt here. If I remember correctly, she did the quilting herself on this part of it with her embroidery machine and then the rest of it with uh, straight line quilting. And she got her pumpkin table runner put together from last month. 
Gloria up in Martinez did this adorable embroidered Halloween quilt. So it looks like it's a whole bunch of uh, Halloween train pieces. So that's a real fun project. She did um, uh, some mug rugs. So she got a Halloween one done. And then I don't know if, you'd, if that would be considered Christmas or winter for the snowman, but she got that one done also. Then she did a bed runner. So in our Tipsy Tuesday, our last Tipsy Tuesday, we did the reversible um, like table runner. She lengthened it and made it into a bed runner. So the leaves are one side and then um, the Halloween is the other side. So she got Halloween on one side, fall on the other. And so just so that in case anybody missed that on Tipsy Tuesday, the way we put this together, you sew both sides at the same time and then you'll end up with a reversible project. So good job on that, Gloria. Christy finished up her um, harvest table event that we did a few weeks back. So it was a table runner. It was napkins. I loved that the napkin said turkey pie and no politics, some napkin rings. So she got that one done. And then she also finished up her, uh, the make and take that we offered. Um, I think in August we did that make and take. So that was a fun one to get done. Christy Cranston finished up her Diamond Skill Builder. So this was a seven month, maybe eight month project that we did. This was all done in the embroidery machine. It was called Diamond Skill Builder. So she chose to do the Lone Star version of it and it turned out fantastic. She also did the spiky table runner class. She just laid hers out a little bit different. She said it, what I want to say spiky table runner runaway, or she gave it a name. I just don't remember it. But she turned hers into a bench pillow, which once again, I always love to see when you guys take design uh, projects and make them uh, useful what, for what your decor is or what you need it for, whether it's a gift or for yourself. And then she did this pillow, which is counted cross stitch. So that is counted cross stitch in the middle. She's got some cute Kimberbell bat fabric on the top and bottom of it. Some straight line quilting turned out fantastic. Tracy up in Oregon. So she finished her um, August uh, Breakfast Club project, which was the apple wall hanging. She added some different uh, tabs uh, to hang it with. And then it looks like she used her clear blue tiles and her embroidery machine to do the quilting. So um, another thing I love about a lot of these projects is you can also use them to learn other techniques. Maybe you're learning to embroider in your, uh, excuse me, quilt with your embroidery machine, or you just need to learn a little bit of free motion quilting. Um, all of those always are um, good options. And I hope that these projects continue to let you learn some of those things. She also finished up her fall table runner. What was interesting is we gave everybody faces um, in case they wanted to turn it into a Halloween project and I have yet to see one with the jack-o'-lantern faces. Um, Lini down in Southern California, so this is a really fun, so this was a pillow blank that she had. And so she did one side for fall and everything uh, give thanks. She used some glitter vinyl there. Uh, she had some quilting in the background on her embroidery machine. And then on the other side, she did boo. So she has a reversible throw pillow, um, which is a really great idea to be able to um, utilize that. So good job on that, Lini. And then she did um, an embroidered card for a wedding they went to. So happily ever after, that's just embroidery on uh, cardstock. And then this is the Aaron crossbody bag. So this was a Kimberbell uh, digital dealer exclusive. And she decided to try hers out with vinyl. Um, I did mine with cork. We showed that last week. Um, so once again, I always love to see um, people get out of their boxes a little bit, try different products um, to get different um, outcomes. She did her cup of cheer. And this is a kind of a cute story. So this one is for her son and his family. So that is the original cup of cheer. And then I know this, but she reminded me that she drives a cute little Volkswagen bug. So when she made her cup of cheer for her house, if you look at the very bottom where the old station wagon was, she changed it out and put a Volkswagen bug 
um, for the car to match her car and to personalize it for herself. So I always think things like that are such fun ideas to do. You can take any of these projects and add in an extra block, change a block, and personalize them um, to you. Emma has been at it again with some amazing bags. Um, when you take Emma and you take Anne, I have never seen two women that can make such amazing, amazing bags and just turn them out. So I always love to see what those two are up to. These are, um, they look like dogs to me. I don't think they're bears, but whatever they are, they're dogs, they're bears. But these were memory um, animals, we shall say, and they came um, from some clothes. Um, so those are a gift that she made for somebody out of uh, um, some old clothing. She finished up a Christmas pillow. And I thought this pillow was cute. It's all fun and games until someone ends up in a cone. <laughs> and then she did a memory pillow for um, someone else. So the shirt, which had all of that beautiful embroidery on it, and then she made a matching mask for um, the receiver of that gift. And this is another memory quilt that she did. I don't remember if it was all for the same family in the notes. Michelle did really fun pillowcases for all of her grandkids for Halloween. And she did embroidered stockings. Um, she has a beach theme in her house, so she did these embroidered starfish stockings for Christmas. So she's way ahead of the game. Then she sent in the picture. This was a class we did earlier in the year. They did a family vacation and she did bags for um, all of the, uh, for her daughter and daughter-in-laws for their beach trip. And then she finished up this great project also. Teresa over in Ridgecrest finished up her pumpkin. I tried to zoom this in. She did a lot of quilting on this. So she did some, um, she did some crosshatch quilting. She did some orange peel quilting. She did some star quilting in here. So it's really nice um, to see people using, once again, these projects to work on their skills. Um, she quilted the pumpkin stems and everything. So nice job on that, Teresa. And then this is another um, table runner. So this is that reversible table runner that we did in breakfast, excuse me, in Tipsy Tuesday. Um, I guess that was last week. Um, so she's got the chicken and, and the roosters on one side and then the other side is all strawberry fabric and then here's a close-up of the other side so once again a really cute table runner um, really easy to flip it over and um, have two projects in one and this is a really quick and easy project so I'm glad to see people using some of the things we show in Tipsy Tuesday Marvell has been busy. She had a, a long-awaited vacation this year after COVID. Um, they had a, a trip planned, a family trip on a cruise um, with all of the restrictions, and they were going out of Canada, so all of that good stuff. She finally is back and did some napkins and placemats as a wedding gift. And then she did this great little uh, pumpkin wall hanging for Halloween. If I remember correctly, this was all Alaska fabric that she bought on her trip. And then she did this tote bag um, using um, Alaska fabric. So in Alaska, they have uh, batiks that are not available to the rest of the United States. So when, the, the, um, when they are printed, they're exclusive to quilt shops in Alaska. So these are really cute, uh, really fun projects. And then she did um, one of the quick 10 minute table runner projects using some more Alaska fabric. Then she said in her message to me that she'll be sitting down with the grandkids um, and they're gonna come and they're gonna do the pumpkin project from um, Last Breakfast Club. So she does a lot of sewing with her grandkids and she uses Breakfast Club as a lot of the projects to sew with them. And that will wrap up our show and tell for this month. So great job, everybody. As a reminder, um, as a reminder, 
we uh, do give out a gift certificate for show and tell. You do not have to purchase a Breakfast Club project to participate. Photos at thimbletown.com. You guys can send your pictures in anytime and then we will include them in to um, our show and tell. Let me just go back. Um, good morning, Carolyn. Hello, Judy. Um, hi, Penny. Hi, Nancy. Good morning, Sally. Good morning, Sue. Good morning, Janet. I probably missed some of you as I'm scrolling through here. Um, yes, the pumpkin table runners were... Um, were really fun uh, to make and people have really liked it. Shout out Kelly. Um, so we will go on. So we have just a few odds and ends this morning for Breakfast Club, um, some new products, and then um, we're going to go in to what our project is. And then I'm actually gonna do a demo uh, for you guys. So we're gonna start out with the newest table topper of the month, which is from Riley Blake. As you guys know, there is a table topper of the month. You can get any of the previous um, that we still have left on our website. Everything comes in a nice box. It's got a full color pattern, has everything for your quilt top, your binding, and then of course the pattern. So this is the November project. If you remember, we work multiple months ahead so that you have plenty of time to get um, them ready for the holidays. And then they're great ways to um, once you get through them, then you're going to have them for years to come for all of the seasons or all of the holidays, depending on what you're working on. So I wanted to remind you guys, I had told you, I showed you guys this fabric, which I love. It's just got great colors. It's got great design in it. It has lots of uh, fantastic coordinates. And I had said, you know, we really ought to make a bag out of this. So I found a pattern and I took it to Ann and I said, can you look through this pattern? Is it something you think um, people would like? And she always likes to look through patterns because if she doesn't think they're any good, she doesn't want to make them, especially for people that it might not have the bag making skills. So she went through the pattern. She says it was a great pattern to do. And we came up with the Candace bag. So this is a really fun project. Um, we don't have a class for this currently. Um, I'm not sure if we will or won't, but this is a, a really, um, it's an intermediate bag and there's multiple options. You can put a zipper in it, you cannot put a zipper in it. So there are all those things. So this has a great pocket here. So you have some nice contrast fabric to show through. Um, and of course, always steps things up. This uh, project doesn't actually call for uh, quilting, but Ann did put the quilting on the front and the back of the bag. And then of course, when you get inside, it's got pockets, it's got a great lining in it. And then it does have an optional zipper closure, or you can leave that bag open. So a really great project. It's the, it's a good size. We have the pattern available. And then we did put kits together because sometimes on bags, it's just easier because you need you know, a front and an inside lining and pockets and a pocket lining. So when we do kits, we label everything of what it is. And then this is uh, the perfect project for you. So we do have the canvas bags um, available for you. Um, there is also a pattern, which is really um, good to go. So from there, um, we are going to, oh, I was going to show you. So this is the project that I am teaching as soon as we finish today. So this is the Kimber Bell uh, No Place Like Home Pillow. Um, it even has quilted borders. Really fun project to do. So we'll be teaching that this afternoon. One of my favorite new projects is our Quilt Quilt Quilt. Um, I have always loved So Kind of Wonderful products, patterns, and rulers. So they started years ago um, with something called the Quick Curve Ruler. Then they did the Quick Curve Mini, which we have done multiple uh, patterns uh, with throughout the year. Lots of wall hangings. Um, we've done the Snowman and we did the um, Lucky, the Posh Lucky, which was the for St. Patrick's Day. We've done the Easter Bunny, we've done the Turkey, we've done Posh Holly. So Mrs. Claus, Mr. Claus, our Santa, I should say. I can't remember what else, but it has been just a really fun ruler. Now they have a new ruler out that is called the Curve It. 
Um, once again, their instructions, their graphics, their patterns are fantastic. They do some tutorials on. But they have a new um, book out. And I want to say book. It's like a booklet. Um, and it is called Text Me. And in Text Me, you are going to have the quilt, quilt, quilt pattern, which I absolutely love. I think every sewing room needs um, this project. So we did this out of this fat quarter bundle and a background fabric. So it, you, it's got dots and stripes in it. We have all of the dots in stock by themselves. We did not order the stripes. We just, because we did it in the fat quarter bundles. I'm not sure if you guys can see on um, camera, but we took the leftovers from cutting it out. We did a scrappy binding. We did simple, um, I call it straight line, but we did simple straight line wave quilting on it which gives it just fun and simple. I think it's a project you can quilt um, using straight lines. But here's what else I love about this particular booklet. So it uses the, excuse me, I said curve it. It's called the Wonder Curve. The Curve It is the long arm ruler, and that's a thing I can't get out of my head because I use the Curve It on my long arm. It's called the Wonder Curve ruler. But in the text me, you get the entire alphabet. So if you wanted to make something, and it, if you wanted to make, a pillow with your grandson's name on it, for example. I'll just use that as an example. You have all of the instructions to make all of the letters in both uppercase and lowercase and three different sizes. So you can really make different things that you want. You can do Christmas. But in here, I'm just going to flip through all of the numbers. You also have some other patterns. So it gives you all of the... Um, um, regular ones and even the alphabet quilt that's on the front is great for kids when they're learning their alphabet it's something that they can keep around but I want to flip through here and just show you a couple of the other patterns so we have quilt 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 then they have a number one and then this has all different things on there there's a snowman there's um, punctuation there's a sun so that's a really fun uh, project too and then that'll give you um, all of the lessons on how to do the numbers I should have put my little mark here on there. And then there's also a love uh, project on here. So there's five different projects that are in this book for you guys to do. So text me is great. Once again, we did the quilt, quilt, quilt. You just need a fat quarter bundle. You can get background fabric. I'm sure you have background fabric in your stash. Grab the text me book, grab the wonder curve ruler, and you guys will have a lot of fun with it. There are multiple patterns from So Kind of Wonderful that use the Wonder Curve Ruler and we will uh, continue to do those. Um, those of you that are new, anytime we use a ruler, we find more than one thing to do with that ruler. Because when I buy a ruler personally, I don't want to use it one time. Occasionally, I'll buy a ruler that's a one-time use, but it's very, very seldom. So the Wonder Curve Ruler will have more um, projects in the future and possibly some classes on that too. Then we have, we brought back out because it was so popular and when we were doing some cleaning we came across what we thought we were sold out on is the sandcastle, so swatch. Now here's the scary part, we're going to put a graphic up in a little bit, not yet. There's only 78 days left until Christmas, which is absolutely horrifying. So those of you that need some fun, quick quilts left to do or to make, you um, swatch is a perfect one. So this is all in the teals and the browns. Um, it's two jelly rolls is all that you need, or bally pops I should say. But then we also have the new finger paints in. So if you want something that's got a little bit more color, this has got greens and blues and purples and yellows. So if you want something that is more colorful, this would be another great option for you. So that quilt is called Swatch. Um, there's no background fabric. There's nothing other than two um, ballet pops. If you want it bigger than the throw size that we did, then you would add another ballet pop to it and you can keep going. So a fun project, a fast project, and something you can still get done, get in for quilting and all of that before the end of the year. Marissa's going to put up a coupon for you. So that coupon is BOO, correct? So BOO okay. at checkout. All of our, if you go, is it in Breakfast Club, all the Halloween fabric? 
Yes, and it's only off the Halloween fabric in Breakfast Club. So in Breakfast Club, you guys will see a Halloween fabric category that Marissa put together for you. So all of our Halloween fabric is 40% off through the week, okay? So all you have to do is put it in your cart. It is a one yard minimum, and then you can check out. When you check out, hit boo um, for the coupon code, and you will get 40% off. So those of you that need to make some last minute uh, Christmas, excuse me, Christmas gifts, some last minute pillowcases for your kids or grandkids, this would be the time to do it. So all of our remaining Halloween fabric is 40% off. It's on the website. You just have to use the coupon code BOO to get that. So speaking of the 78 days till Christmas, now is the time to start getting your quilts into your long armors uh, because things will start to back up. As a reminder, we do uh, digital edge to edge quilting so you can send your product, your product, your projects into Thimbletown. Um, just give us a call and let us know so that we can watch UPS or FedEx for them. Um, anybody that ships their quilts to us, you get free return shipping. Um, and that's digital edge to edge. We have a three week or less turnaround time guaranteed. So if you need your quilts long armed, you can get them into Thimbletown and get them done and you have time for Christmas. So regardless of who your long armor is out there, just remember um, things will start closing off because it is that time and everybody gets their quilts in um, starting now is when people start rushing to get them finished because they want them back to bind possibly to ship and all of that. So let's give away the first gift certificate, Amy. So let's give away the, we give a $20 gift certificate away for show and tell. Um, and once again, anybody can participate in that. You do not have to uh, purchase a monthly breakfast club project to participate in our show and tell. And if you do participate, you're eligible. So this month's winner is Teresa Bar and I always say it wrong, Varn Hargan, or Hagen. I'm not really sure, Teresa, so I apologize. She's part of this uh, Six Pack East. That is how I'm going to now refer to you guys, Six Pack East. And then we have a Six Pack West over on the coast. They are the original Six Pack, um, but they're willing to share their name. So congratulations, <laughs> Teresa. Amy will uh, send that gift certificate out to you um, via email so that you guys can use that online. Good morning, Chris Lusk in Kentucky. Hello, Carletta. Hi, Joy. Hi, Debbie. Um, Karen in uh, Missouri. Yes, the So Kind of Wonderful projects are great. Um, I remember when the ruler first came out teaching several of their projects. I have always um, loved them. Good morning, um, Laura. Thank you. I love my shirt too. Those of you that are newer, Irene makes me shirts all the time. This is my sewing shirt. It is one of my favorites. I cannot wait to wear my Christmas shirt. Um, good morning, Kim. Hi, Sandra. Um, good morning, Donna. Um, yeah, I cannot wait to wear my upcoming Christmas shirt. All right, so let's move on to our project, okay? And I am just going to step off this camera for a quick second because I want to get something ready to show you guys as a demo. All righty. So those of you that know, we used to say when we did Breakfast Club in hand, if you open your Breakfast Club project, we're going to cut your hand, or in store, we're going to cut your hands off. So uh, hopefully you guys don't ruin the surprise. Those of you that are impatient, just please remember, don't ever share this ahead of time because everybody does like to see the surprise. So in our Breakfast Club packet this month, we are going to start with, Gloria, I do have a Halloween shirt, except I left it at home. So um, I didn't get to wear my Halloween shirt this time. So we have um, some grow green ribbon, and then we have a stack of five inch squares um, that are all gonna be in fall colors. There's four different fabrics here. There's two of each, okay? So all in fall fabrics. We have some Wonder Under or Pell on 805. As a reminder, there is one side that is bumpy. That is the fusible side. 
And then the other side that is smooth like wax paper, that's the release paper. So once you have fused it on, you will then peel that portion off. We have some um, background fabric. So I love this. It's got a very kind of rustic look to me. We also have some backing fabric, okay? So as you can tell, we are into fall still. And then we have some interfacing. So this is 926. Now in your pattern, it says it's fusible. I just missed the typo in there and didn't have that removed. So it is not fusible. So this is a Pellon product. Um, it is not as thick as, um, it is not as thick as Peltex, but it is definitely much thicker than a regular interfacing. So this interfacing is not fusible. You could purchase a fusible one. Um, I just couldn't find one that would work that was not as heavy as Peltex. So that's where um, we kind of get into there. All right. And then of course you have your pattern. So our project this month is going to be our thankful bunting. Is that what we would call it, bunting? Yes, our thankful bunting. Oh, there is also a uh, jute in there. So you will be making um, this project. Now you can make it reversible, which we are going to talk about that. So let's talk about your pattern first. Um, I also forgot there is jute in there to hang that. Um, we decided to do this project. It's something I've thought about often. And what I wanted to do on this is I wanted it to be useful in more than one setting. Meaning, yes, obviously thankful is for the holidays. But if you wanted to make, and I'll just use Marvell as a, um, I'll use Marvell as a um, example. She does a lot with her grandkids. Well, maybe she wants to say one that says celebrate or one that says birthday or one that says um, for Valentine's, maybe a be mine or whatever it should be. So we're going to talk about additional lettering, but we wanted to give you a basic template that you could then use for any season, any decoration, um, maybe you're having a bridal shower and you want to do bride, whatever it is, we just wanted a basic bunting template that you guys can then make into anything. So on your pattern, so this is going to be two pages. You guys are going to have a template here, which is going to be for the bunting. Now this inside line represents the stitch line, and this is the size that you are going to cut your, um, this 926, so your um, interfacing on it. So that interfacing, we wanted it to have a little more ump and body to it, um, instead of something that was gonna be a little flimsier. You do not have to put that in there. But you will want to use this template, and that's gonna be the template that you guys cut out your front and your back with. And then the inside dash line is a seam line, but it is also your interfacing line so that you do not have that interfacing in your seam when you turn it. Now, um, you guys can make a copy of that or just trace that. On Tipsy Tuesday, um, earlier in the year, there is a video that we did on cutting templates using your ruler. So those of you that are part of our Tipsy Tuesday group and you need um, the way that I cut these, as a reminder, I like to take my template and then put a piece of double-sided tape down. Then I can go right in and lay it and then cut it. So you guys can see that demo on our Tipsy Tuesday. If you're not part of our Tipsy Tuesday group, uh, Tipsy Tuesday uh, by Thimbletown, that is an option for you. You can go in. It is a private Facebook group, and we get together on the second and fourth Tuesday at 6 p.m. I'll remind you guys of that again at the end of this. So you are going to take your, um, your fabric. You will cut out a front and a back, and then you guys will also cut out your pellon. Now, I find it easier to sew around that um, with your quarter inch seam, leave an open for turning, and then you can spray baste um, your interfacing right in. 
um, instead of having to sew around it. So you guys can follow and do that however you want. Now, we included in the um, four different fabrics there, so you have eight fabrics to do thankful. And on that, uh, Marissa did all the lettering. These are already reversed for you to say thankful, okay? Um, you will trace those, you will cut those out, and then you will have, and then you can fuse them into place. Now, those of you with embroidery machines, maybe you want to use an embroidered font, maybe you want to use an applique font, there's a lot of options for that. Now, on Tuesday, you guys are going to get um, an email. So, we have two left. Yeah. We have two Breakfast Club kits left. You can't purchase them online anymore um, because, once again, those of you that are new on Saturday, it's actually the day of class, so it's no longer available to register for, which would give you a kit. Um, you can call after 1030 to the shop, and you can claim one of the two remaining if you want. If you purchased Breakfast Club on Tuesday, we are going to send you a file. Are we sending both versions? And we're going to send you guys both versions. This is going to be the entire alphabet in non-mirrored letters and mirrored letters. Okay? So you guys will be able to go right in and you can make any other version of this munting that you want. I know that I'm going to see um, future projects in our Breakfast Club show and tell where you guys may have um, um, embellished these. You might have done some background quilting. There is all kinds of things that you can do, and I really can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Now, this demo won't pertain to everybody. However, I do want to do it anyways. Um, if you have an electronic cutter, a Silhouette Cameo, a Brother Scan and Cut, a Cricut, I don't know if there's any, there, I'm sure there's some other ones out there. Most of the software is basically going to be the same. The keystrokes might be a little different. But if you have an electronic cutter, I'm going to do just a quick two-minute demo on how you can use the pattern that we have. Um, which we will, once again, you're going to get all of the letters in email, um, the pattern that we have, and actually bring it right into your silhouette um, and cut them. So I'm going to show you guys this quick demo. All right, so on my screen, I have opened up my silhouette studio. And I'm going to come here, and I am going to... I'm going to go in and find where this is. So I'm going to come here. I've got all my Breakfast Club stuff. I'm going to grab my file. Okay. So in this instance, I have on this is a two page project. Um, so one has the template on it, and then the other one has. Um, the, the second page has the remaining letters. So I'm actually going to ungroup these items and I'm just going to import them right in. All right, I'm going to quickly just change my mat size so that visually it's easier to see. So on here, I have the pocket and then I have the letters. Now these letters are in reverse. A lot of times we cut in reverse, but I'm just going to flip these. So I'm going to highlight them and I'm going to flip these horizontally. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move these letters around. I can move them and to wherever I want to position. But before I actually can cut, I need to trace these letters because they're just currently an image. So on my left-hand side, I have a little trace panel. Um, Lini and I call it the piece of toast. It looks like a piece of toast, and I'm going to open that. All I have to do is select my trace area, and I'm going to highlight it, which is going to turn that um, yellow in my instance. I'm going to increase this threshold to the 100%, and then I'm going to hit my trace button. So it has now traced those shapes. So I can then come right here, and I'm just going to grab and move away the actual black, and I'm going to make this so you guys can see it. Let me just darken these lines. 
so you guys can see it. You will see that I traced those lines, okay? So these are now ready to position on my mat anywhere that I want them uh, to cut, okay? Um, I can move them, I can put them up in the corners, however you guys do it. It is that simple. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to import that in as a, um, as a PDF. We don't use the image. We ungroup it. Um, and then we just open our trace panel. We trace it. We can then move away the black portion, which is technically just the image, and it will um, give us our trace letters. Then you can add your fusible and send it just the way that you normally would. Now, I understand that this isn't for everybody, and I understand some people have silhouettes, some people have um, crickets, some people have scan and cuts. Um, the, the process is virtually the same. Now, I am working with Lini, um, who is a friend and customer of ours. She is going to teach a brother scan and cut and a cricket class for us. Um, and then I'm going to teach another uh, silhouette class. So you guys can watch for that um, coming up. But with that, it sure does make cutting um, the letters very easy. Our letters are not currently stitched down. We were just getting our project done. But I cut all of these out um, on the um, silhouette. So it's another great project. We hope that you guys like it um, as much as um, we do. And I hope that you find many other um, uses. Hi, Vin. Hi, Gail. Um, let's see. Emma's on. Hello, Marvell. Yes, so the alphabet as a reminder. I have to teach class as soon as we leave here. So on Tuesday... Um, possibly Monday, but we will email you guys out the entire alphabet in PDF. It'll be mirrored and non-mirrored, okay? There are two breakfast clubs left. You can call Amy at the store after 1030, and she will uh, get those for you. Hello, Donna. She likes the project. Um, we have lots of uh, people that do like that project, so obviously we are glad for that. So a few more things, um, 78 days till Christmas, don't forget that. Those of you that need um, some long arming done, uh, we do um, edge to edge. I have quilted for, I was counting the other day, I think 17 years now. So you can send your projects into Thimbletown. If you are out of town, uh, you will get free return shipping. We do have a three week or less guarantee. Um, however, when you get close to the holidays, there is gonna be a cutoff. So don't wait until the last minute. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Our next breakfast club is going to be the 19th, the 19th of November. Um, that project is already designed. Of course, I'm excited about it. I'm gonna ask another question here, but I'm always excited about the projects. That's nothing new. So the 19th of November, mark your calendars, will be our next breakfast club. There are only two breakfast clubs left uh, for 2022. It is hard to believe. It'll wrap up our fifth year of doing um, breakfast club, which sometimes I still cannot fathom and get my head wrapped around that part of it. Um, also, Tipsy Tuesday. So we do have a private Facebook group, which is Tipsy Tuesday. Please uh, feel free to join it. We did, on our Tipsy Tuesday, you saw a couple of reversible table runner projects. Excuse me, Gloria, she turned hers into a bed runner project. So we did that on our last Tipsy Tuesday. We are going to do several weeks coming up of um, projects that are going to be gift giving. So we've got another free pattern for you guys on Tipsy Tuesday. Only way you guys can get that pattern is to join Tipsy Tuesday. So we'll be doing another demo of a project that you guys will be able to do for friends, family, um, kids, grandkids. Um, so that'll be good. So Tipsy Tuesday is on the second and fourth Tuesday um, of every month. Mystery Monday is the first and third, which is our uh, machine embroidery group. So we'd love to have you a part of both of those. Always lots of demos and tips and tricks. Did I go through all the graphics, Marissa? Mm -hmm. As a reminder, the boo, which we'll put back up, 
is your coupon code for all um, in stock Halloween um, fabric that is on the website. Okay, that is good for a week um, or until it's gone, which it will go fast. So if you need that, just go ahead and get it online and then use Boo at checkout um, for your coupon code. Once again, thank you guys um, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Oh, they're waving at me. We have to give away another prize. So we have a lot of people that are on a, just a membership where they uh, purchase Breakfast Club a whole year at a time, six, year, six years, six months at a time. Um, and this month's winner is... Laura Hack. Laura Hack. So congratulations, Laura. If you are not, and I cannot remember everybody that is in and not in, if you are part of Breakfast Club already for next month, Amy will send you a gift certificate or add you in for December. Um, if not, she will add you in for Breakfast Club for next month. So she will handle that. If you have any questions, Laura, you can ask her. Tracy and Gloria have questions about. Okay, let me look, let me look. Questions, questions, questions. I don't see questions, Amy. Would it be a cricket class for beginners, says Gloria? Cricket class, they, it would be for beginner. We won't be doing an advanced class. So um, the, the point of doing a cricket and a brother scan and cut class would be to do the basics. Because I have a brother scan and cut sitting under my two silhouettes. Um, it's out of the box, but it still hasn't ever been plugged in because I've never taken the time to learn their software, which is probably very much the same as the silhouette. Things are always just moved around. It's just like, for all intents and purposes, a fop is gonna do the same thing as a Bernina that's gonna do the same thing as a baby lock. They're all gonna have one or two features that are different, but they also, they all embroider, and the software is gonna be the same. So yes, those will be uh, beginner classes. I will be taking the class with Lini. Um, so that I can learn um, the scan and cut. Once again, my Cricut is also sitting there um, unused. Once again, it's not. Um, the reason I continue to go back to Silhouette, I was asked this recently, is I have used it for so long that I know the ins and outs of it. And then when somebody is using one and they have a question, I know very easily how to troubleshoot it. I have always wanted to learn the other two machines. It's just been a time thing. So when I spoke with Lini and she said she would teach a class for us, I was very excited because at least I can learn the basics. So when one of you does call me, um, we can ask. And the other question? Is that class going to be virtual in, or in person, says Tracy Ross? Virtual. So those will be <laughs> virtual. Lini is in Southern California, so it will be virtual. While we will continue to offer some in-store classes, the majority of our classes are going to be virtual through COVID. We have built such a community with Thimbletown all over the country that we are never going to not do things virtually and lead anybody out. Yes, Marissa. Do you have dates for these classes, says Debbie Miller-Connor? I do not. So, <laughs> no, <laughs> we're done. <laughs> so, guys, I don't. This whole thing just came up last week at Mystery Monday. So we will get Lini's schedule. We will probably do it early November. It is all gonna be based around her schedule, but we will get it in. The second we have a class scheduled, we will post it on our social media. We'll post it in Tipsy Tuesday. We'll post it in Mystery Monday. We'll send it out in email. So once we have those class dates, I would say plan on early November, um, we will do it. As a reminder, anytime we offer a virtual class, and I'll just use my friend Chris as, a, as an example. She works. Maybe the class is going to be on Wednesday at 11 o'clock. She cannot take the class. That's, I'm just using a day and a time. By purchasing the virtual class, you get the class recording. The class recording is yours to keep. So you guys can refer back to it. So I can't stress to you enough that virtual classes, whether they meet your schedule or not, are very good because you can refer back to it. If you're working on part of it and you stop watching the video to do the sewing, maybe something comes up and you can't get back to it for a week or two, you can always refer back to it as the class video. That is one thing that I really came to notice during COVID is 
when we go to in-person classes, we get to talk to our friends and we do really enjoy them. But when class instruction is over, it's over. There's no video. There's nothing really to refer back to other than getting a hold of the instructor or maybe the notes that you've taken. With virtual classes, you guys can go back and watch. You can fast forward, rewind. You can go to specific points. So don't not sign up for a virtual class because maybe you have to work because you get the video regardless. And then, of course, signing up is the only way. Um, so, yes, and Tracy, she loves that because sometimes we forget things and we need uh, to re-watch. So... With that being said, I'm going to ask one more question. I'm going to actually put this out in a poll um, a little bit later. We are coming up on 2023, um, and we have been back and forth about what we want to do for Breakfast Club 2023. Do we want to continue it the way we're doing it? Do you guys want to see something different? Um, some things like that. So we are welcome to any input that you may have. When this video ends, you can go back, you can leave a comment, you can email me, um, jeremy at thimbletown.com, you can send the question or the thought to amy at thimbletown.com, and then we can kind of just look at it and see um, what you guys are thinking. We have some ideas, but we wanna know what you guys uh, might wanna do for Breakfast Club 2023. So we are always, um, we're always up to that. And Christy says, and we don't have to lug our machines to classes. Yes, that is another nice thing. You don't have to carry your machines and you are in your space. Sometimes I have noticed as an instructor, we get into class, we start to talk, maybe we forgot something at home. We're just not in our normal space. And sometimes um, a class in person, we might not accomplish as much because we're not as comfortable. When we do classes um, from the comfort of our own sewing rooms, maybe in our sweatpants and slippers, whatever it is, um, we're comfortable, we seem to get more done, and we always have a good time. I want to thank you guys again for joining us for our October Breakfast Club. We look forward to seeing you on the 19th of November. We'll see you in Tipsy Tuesday, Mystery Monday, probably a live sale. Um, who knows what else. So have a great uh, rest of your day and we will see you guys soon.